I'm Pastor Brian Paulson, and this is The Message. Thank you for listening here in Libertyville, in Lake County, or all around the world. Center your heart now with the prayer for illumination, listen deeply to Holy Scripture, and get ready for God to deliver a word to you through the message by our associate pastor, the Reverend Amy Heinrich. Our first scripture reading for this morning is the 98th Psalm. Listen for God's holy word. Sing to the Lord a new song because God has done wonderful things. God's own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. God has revealed God's righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered God's loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth, be happy, rejoice out loud, sing your praises, sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast, shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, and the world and all of its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord, because God is coming to establish justice on the earth. God will establish justice in the world rightly. God will establish justice among all the people fairly. Our second reading for this morning is taken from the 42nd chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the fifth verse. Listen once again for God's word. God the Lord says, the one who created the heavens, the one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its offspring, the one who gave breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for a good reason. I will grasp your hand and I will guard you. I will give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to lead the prisoners from prison and those who sit in darkness from the dungeon. I am the Lord. That is my name. I don't hand out my glory to others or my praise to idols. The things announced in the past, look, they've already happened. But I am declaring new things. Before they even appear, I tell you about them. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing God's praise from the ends of the earth. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Well, we often quip that we're just preaching to the choir. <laughs> but perhaps the choir has been preaching to us. What do we learn from the choir? We learn that when we as individuals don't shout so that our voice can be heard above the crowd, but rather listen to those around us and blend our voice with the community, we can make beautiful music. We learn that the music is indeed the language of the soul, that faith in God is an ineffable mystery that is best captured 
through music. We learn that music can lift us up in times of sorrow and suffering and carry us toward hope, healing, peace, and joy. We learn that music inspires the imagination and touches the heart like nothing else can. Song is the very heartbeat of the Christian faith. For over 2,000 years, Christians have been singing their faith in diverse ways. It has ranged from quiet, contemplative, Gregorian chants to rousing spirituals and protest songs. From songs of anguishing lament to hand-clapping, foot-stomping gospel praise. From stark, unstructured plainness of some Quaker songs to the sumptuous liturgical pageantry of Eastern Orthodoxy. From traditional hymns sung to the glory of a pipe organ to amplified foot stomp and hand clapping Christian rock. Music is the perfect medium to capture the breadth and depth of emotions of faith. From indescribable joy to unspeakable grief, from yearning for freedom to praise for deliverance. Music, like God, is deeper than words. God is bigger than doctrines and transcends the most persuasive and passionate preaching. Music honors the truth that God bursts the boundaries of our human capacities to comprehend. I think music begins with God. Pulsing rhythms vibrate throughout the creation. Perhaps God sung the creation into existence. God is the composer of the music of the spheres to whose glory the stars sing and the angels of heaven chant. God has created us to tune our ears, our lives, and our lips to the song of radical grace and join the cosmic chorus of praise. Not only were the psalms meant to be sung, many of the psalms have a resounding theme of singing to God, like our psalm for today, which begins with the joyous affirmation, sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. I love how the psalmist couches our praise within the entire created ecosystem, that is praising God as well. Shout triumphantly to the Lord all the earth. Let the sea and everything in it roar. Let all the rivers clap their hands and the mountains rejoice. The psalmist proclaims why we sing. We sing because God is coming to establish justice on earth. Yes, indeed, God's justice is something to sing about, and the yearning for this justice has fueled the songs of tenacious struggle for freedom from any form of oppression, bondage, or bigotry through the centuries. Our text from Isaiah says, God has called servants like the elders and the deacons that we ordain and install today. Listen to the prophet's word. I, the Lord, have called you for a good reason. I will grasp your hand and I will guard you. And I will give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to lead prisoners from prison, and those who sit in darkness from the dungeon. I am declaring new things. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing God's praise from the ends of the earth. We sing because we have been called to join in God's liberating work in the world. 
God has given us all a calling, a purpose, a joy-filled service to usher in God's reign of inclusive love, compassion, and justice. We sing because God is always doing a new thing that brings fresh hope and a promise of new life. And we respond to the new thing that God is doing by singing a new song of our own. Song is thoroughly threaded through our biblical story. Our Exodus story ends with singing God's praise for God's deliverance. Freedom at long last. God's mission of liberation for the children of Israel rested squarely on the shoulders of one of its own helpless sons, Moses, a mere baby in a fragile papyrus basket. Who would ever believe that God's salvific plan would depend on this? Yet, as Christians, we can believe it because we know of another story how God chose another vulnerable baby boy to save us from the ways of sin, death, and destruction, and bless us with life, love, and liberation. This is why Mary sings the glorious Magnificat. There is a fundamental continuity in the way God works through both the lives of Moses and Jesus for the preservation and redemption of life. They are both agents of liberation from all that would enslave us, and this is something to sing about. God heard the cries of our spiritual ancestors, the Hebrews, when they were in bondage and called them out of slavery into freedom. God heard the cries of those who are still marching today for civil rights, whether they be black, women, gay, or transgendered. God hears the cries of the millions of refugees fleeing tyranny and oppression. God hears the cries of the Ukrainians. God hears the cries of the innocent victims of gun violence. And God hears our cries too. And God acts, often in a hidden and holy way, to deliver all who are crushed by the weight of burdens, bondage, and bigotries. Our God sides with the oppressed, and this is something to sing about indeed. A world without song is a world without hope. A world without music would be flat, gray, and insipid. Nobody understands the importance of music in expressing our biblical story and the inner life of the small soul more than our beloved David Edelfelt. He has dedicated his life to sharing his gift of song with others. And David, it has been a true ministry. Listen to some testimonials from choir members about what singing in the choir under David's leadership has meant. You know that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when rubbing elbow, elbows with people who are at the top of their game? Well, that aptly describes how I feel about singing under David's leadership. He is a musician extraordinaire, an accomplished singer, pianist, voice instructor, and choir director, including orchestra, he has released two CDs. The Cole Porter show he performed with Elizabeth Doyle has been played to acclaim in Chicago, Indiana, Paris, New York City, and San Francisco. He is truly multi-talented, which is an easy takeaway from the many solos we have been privileged to hear right here in this church. He sets the bar for the choir high. He wants it from all of us. Musical interpretation, good tone, proper pitch, perfect rhythm, an exaggerated 
enunciation of consonants so that the song words can be understood. He is constantly reminding us to watch him for cutoffs and entrances and to note the composer's instructions on volume or rhythm changes. He gently coaches us towards those ends, at time relying on various personas to make his point. <laughs> Julia Child is his favorite. David is entertaining, humorous, and hardworking, never without a water bottle nearby or a handkerchief to wipe the sweat off his brow at dress rehearsals. And the results are top notch. It is a real privilege to be part of the performance. He is exceptionally humble throughout the process. He always acknowledges the contributions of all of our accompanists, whether on the keyboard or as instrumentalists. We close choir rehearsals in prayer with all of our joys and concerns. David is a caring and a compassionate person. When a choir member is going through a difficult time, he often connects personally and supports each person. When I've gone through tough times, he's always been there as my source of support to encourage me. I have been a member of the chancel choir for over 30 years. When David began working here, it was clear that he had what it took to be our guiding light. Conducting was a bit new to him, but he worked extremely hard to prepare himself to conduct our major works, and he put his heart and his soul into every one. He has grown to be an amazing director and I cannot imagine life without him here. We are like our own little family, meeting every Thursday night, sharing our lives with each other, while we do our best to prepare for our jobs as ministers of music on Sunday mornings. David is our guiding light. Even during hard times, he finds a way to shine. His passion is inspiring, and he has found a way to connect with us as children of God, all in one place, together, singing God's praise. And now I must add a word of affirmation of my own. David, our church is known for the breadth, depth, and excellence of our music ministry. You are an enormous part of why this is true. Our music ministry is magnetic, demonstrating that faith is meant to be sung out. Our choirs have drawn people to our church and modeled how singing holds us together when the world threatens to pull us apart. A church that can sing together can stay together through all the vicissitudes and vexing problems that threaten to divide or diminish the church. We are so profoundly grateful to you, dear friend, for 25 wonderful years of your faithful ministry. Yes, a ministry far beyond a performance, even though you care about excellence. You care far more about the people in the robes and the source of the song to whom you and we all sing how great thou art thank you for listening on our podcast or through our youtube playlist of sermons be sure to forward this message to someone who you believe is seeking god's word today